Yay. All right. So um, what we're talking about today is the echo chamber of information security conferences. The fact that we're all in here talking about all of the stuff that all of us already know to ourselves. And it sucks. And everybody talks about how it sucks. And you're right. This sucks. And there's things we can do about it. And Leslie and I have been doing things about it. And we really want the rest of you to come along and do things about it with us. So brief introductions. Hi, I'm Leslie Carhart. Uh, you may know me better as Hacks for Pancakes. Don't ask where that came from. I do stuff. I am a blue teamer. I do digital. I run an incident response team. I do digital forensics. Uh, let's see. I uh, hack stuff. I do a lot of martial arts. Uh, sometimes I shoot paper-like objects. Hmm. Oh yeah, I uh, I fight people with swords too. I sound really scary on paper. That, that man. Okay. Um, I do a lot of tweeting at people, and I also do a lot of blogging. Uh, hopefully, somebody's noticed. And uh, yeah, well, let's go with Go Air Force because all the other branches have gotten a chance to talk tonight. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm Johnny Xmas, Johnny Christmas. You can pronounce that however you want. I really have no care for it. Uh, I'm a Red Team, pen tester, social engineer for Red Leg, uh, based out of Chicago. Um, that That is hardly what I do as a person. That's hardly who I am. Information security, like Cat Sweet was saying, is something that uh, I just kind of fell into uh, as part of my life adventure. Uh, I am the TSA keys guy. Who knows about the leaked TSA keys? I believe we talked about that in a recent talk. What's that? I did not leak them. Uh, I was part of uh, the team that worked on creating the 3D printable forms of them. Um, I uh, started as a hardware hacker. I uh, did a lot of things. We're not going to talk about that. Um, I'm a musician, I'd say first and foremost. I went to school for pharmacology uh, slash biochemistry. Um, I'm a, a very devout spiritual mystic, practicing it daily. Um, I tweet heavily, but though not anywhere near as much as Leslie. Hi, I'm Leslie, and I have a Twitter problem. <laughs> it's, it's a fact. Um, Swift on security <laughs> retweets me uh, and ruins my day because my phone battery dies whenever she does. And uh, Justin Bieber doesn't probably doesn't know who I am at all. I don't know why we brought that up. <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah. So. What you what you got to take this? Sure. So let's talk a little bit more about what the echo chamber is, because we've all heard this buzzword. Um, so what does it mean? It means we are all we all know what the problems are in security. I mean, if I ask anybody who's an infosec person in this room, you're going to tell me five top headlines right now. One of them is probably going to be the FBI Apple thing. One of them is probably going to be encryption in general, um, et cetera, et cetera. China might come up in that list. China, take a you take a drink. I don't have a drink. You take a drink for me, China. Oh, help, um, help. <laughs> so we know what these problems are, and we debate them heavily, and we drink over them, and we probably drink over them a little bit too much, and we complain. But we never take those concerns and our well-reasoned arguments around them and our technical expertise and bring them outside of this room. And what, is I, what am I talking about outside of this room? I'm talking about people who are not professionally in InfoSec. That means IT professionals, and that means your mechanic down the street. Everybody is affected by security in some aspect. People who want to get into security, people who want to do it as a hobby, and then people who it just affects their daily life, like it does pretty much everybody. Now, so what are the, what are the problems here? Um, first of all, like I said, not everybody outside of our community is aware of what's going on. But secondly, when we're talking about the media, who gets the information to the vast majority of people about security, they have a message that they want to sell. They are trying to get subscribers. They are trying to get readership. And the message that they portray is going to be heavily influenced by factors other than what we know is technically correct, unfortunately or fortunately. Finally, um, there's intense stigmas about hackers out there. Um, there's a way we perceive ourselves, and there's a way that people perceive us. If I asked every single person in this room to draw a picture of a hacker, take out a piece of paper, do your best artwork, draw me a hacker, 
Unfortunately, I think even though not all of us look like what you would draw, you might even be somebody who looks more like me and draw somebody who looks a little bit more like Johnny Christmas. Sorry, Johnny, you're much too stylish for the hacker stigma. I don't mean to call you out there. So, <laughs> yes, call out Ad Adrian. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Adrian. <laughs> It's the ponytail, I swear. He gets the hide I, I need a ponytail to look like a hacker. He gets the hide behind the camera all day. Someone has to call him out. Yeah, it's a nice, comfortable little corner. And um, so I don't want to get into a discussion about gender or race or anything, but we have this preconceived notion about what a hacker looks like, and that affects us. You guys, we are in the field. And if I ask you to draw me a hacker, you're going to draw Neo in his dark basement with lots of cables. Actually, that's what my apartment looks like. But anyway, I, awesome. I have no trench coat. Um, and anyway, um, yeah, it is awesome. It is totally awesome. But not all of us look like that, guys. Um, and finally, like Adrian over there in his corner, we're not always willing to leave our comfort zone. So Netflix is awesome, you guys. Everybody likes to binge watch TV shows while sitting on Kali on the other screen and screwing with stuff. Um, and it's a really comfortable place to be. Yeah, it's, it's really true. We've created this like little bubble for ourselves in our houses where we have all this instant gratification, um, where we've got our Hulu and our Netflix and our PS4. And like, why, why would I ever leave my house? Why would I ever go somewhere and do something like this, speak to a bunch of people, where the chance of failure is greater than zero. When at home, like, if I watch a bad movie on Netflix, I know I can then watch a good movie. Like, or if it's a bad movie, I can just turn it off and go watch a good movie. Um, everything in our house is great. I can play my PS4 and I can hack all day and everything's perfect. Coming outside and talking to people is really difficult. You're constantly feeling like you're being judged. You have a room where the echoing is just insane and you can't hear yourself. Um, and it's, that's 10 times as bad when you're speaking to groups of people who aren't hackers. When you're outside of this realm, when you're going to, um, like legal conferences and talking to a room full of lawyers about why security is important, a room full of people whose daily profession is to tell you why you're wrong and then cite 17 references going back 200 years. I understand it's really hard, um, which I guess leads into this. <laughs> so why does this matter to us? Um, so the first reason is we are in a hiring shortage. I think pretty much everybody who's a hiring manager in here will agree, raise your hand if you are having trouble finding good InfoSec people. So, I mean, there's hands up there. Um, it's hard to hire InfoSec people who are skilled, qualified, and have the personality necessary to be a good InfoSec person. And not all those people are in this room. Uh, there's lots of people who do not look like that picture that you scribbled out in your notebook of a hacker who will be really good at the field. And we want to go find these people. We want to make them our employees. And if they're not going to be our employees, we want them to be our allies instead of us being the scary, awful InfoSec people who block Steam on their corporate network. <laughs> and secondly, we're... Shaking, I'm sorry, Johnny. I, the, blue the blue teamer team. blocked Steam, sorry. Um, we're also allowing the media to tell our story wrong. Like I mentioned, the headlines about the things that really, really matter. We heard about some of those in the last talk on foreign policy. There's things that really, really matter and could really infect, affect us in a big way in the future. And the media is not telling the story right. They're getting it technically incorrect. They're blaming the wrong people. And we're not getting out there and telling them in a way that they will understand and believe that they are incorrect. Um, another really big problem is the is vendors. And you can boo at that. Let's get a boo for vendors. Come on. Yeah. So vendors are creating like all of these like technical terms that are getting flooded into the market. Like everyone's favorite black hat and white hat. Like who, who 10 years ago as a hacker was like calling themselves like black hat and white hat, white hat. Like was there even black hat and white hat wars? Maybe on a very microscopic level. Um, there's, there's all of this marketing going on with vendors trying to sell their stuff and scare people 
into buying the, the latest and greatest thing. The, I mean, the first... Advanced cyber threat analysis and intelligence. <laughs> Drink. Drink seven times for that sentence. What's that? I, all right. All right. It's a good vodka. Um, and, and, and they're, they're trying to scare you into believing that situations exist that don't. That was the whole first talk we heard about this. Well, not the whole first talk, but a huge chunk of the first talk we heard about this evening is that there's these vendors charging tons of money, putting out stuff to help you protect against things that aren't actually even, uh, an issue. Um, aside from the vendors, um, we're not pushing politicians, uh, to, to tackle this FUD problem either. Uh, we're not push, pushing politicians to promote cyber, cyber security, which is a word I have to say now, uh, as, as a realistic goal for individual corporations. Like, yeah, they focus on the cyber security of like, uh, stopping ISIS from creating more Twitter accounts, which is apparently a huge deal and we have to spend a ton of money on it. But they're not doing anything to help corporations and thus trickle down to us poor people um, really get you know get the money to focus on the problems that matter and again uh, it's because we're in this echo chamber all of us are here yelling at each other and complaining and drinking this is like a lot of these talks are nothing more than just a glorified meetup chat where we just show up get a drink, complain about, you know, how crappy work is because no one wants to listen to us because nobody believes that what we're saying is actually important. Uh, and then here we are. And it comes down to because, like, we're not getting out of this. Um, how many people here speak in general, even at InfoSec Cons? How many people have presented at at least one InfoSec Con? Okay, small amount. We need to increase that first and foremost. Every one of you has something cool you've done or something that you're just really knowledgeable on, even if it's, if it's some like weird niche thing. Like you can do a 20 or 30 minute talk on that and get it out there and spread it to, uh, 80 people, 300 people in the room and then via Iron Geek and others get it out onto the internet for someone who's going to stumble across it. Like you wouldn't believe the YouTube comments I get on vid videos I posted four years ago where people are like, Hey, thanks for doing this. I tried these two things and they really worked. Like that's crazy. Uh, and, and so then aside from InfoSec cons, like going and speaking to like, again, just general geek cons is a huge thing. Uh, and that's really what we need to start pushing to do. There's like 400 InfoSec cons. We don't need any more. What we need to do is start taking this message and, and spreading it out beyond yelling at each other. Um, and it's, it's great. I don't know why you're not doing it. We get to do amazing things. Okay, so the super awesome benefits of getting out of this echo chamber. So we've discussed some of the issues that we have already and how it, this can solve them. But first of all, you get to meet a bunch of new people, and those people have different perspectives on security. You cannot be a good security professional unless you get some idea why people click on crap all the time and why they don't want you to revoke their admin rights and why they insist on having a flat network. Yeah, this, uh, this is making me cringe. I'm sorry. I shouldn't even be saying these <laughs> things. But there are business reasons and human reasons why these things occur. And if you're not meeting people outside of our community, you're not going to understand and be able to mitigate why they are happening. Calling people stupid is not a security precaution or procedure. Saying that it's never going to get better because people are idiots is you doing a bad job. Security is not just about buying things from a vendor and then plugging cables into the back of it and saying, good security, Bob, we're all set. Security is about changing the culture of your company. And subsequently, for those in this room especially, people who give enough of a crap about security to go out of their way and take a ton of their personal time, some of you an entire weekend, to come here and do this, who care about security this much, it's your job to change the security culture of this country and hopefully, and this is a lofty goal, the planet. But th if you're here, this talk is for you. 
Yes, and like I mentioned previously, there's preconceptions about what a hacker is. And some of these are very, very negative common connotations. There is no other professional field except for maybe tax collectors, where every participant is automatically considered by people in their subconscious to be a criminal. Think about that. Let that sink in for a minute. People think subconsciously on a mass scale that we're all criminals. And we're here on our free time trying to learn more about how to make our country and our companies more secure. So we want to try to change that stigma of the hacker in the basement. And in a way, it's like, I, I like some of the, the ways that they've per, the, portrayed hackers in some movies recently, because I, I did like, the one thing I liked about Black Hat was that Chris Hemsworth was a physically fit person who didn't fit that stigma stereotype of a hacker in every single way. So we want to prove that we are not a stigma, not a, a flat image of something that people perceive as a hacker. Yeah. He was also an excellent mark, marksman, which I appreciated. <laughs> and actually, I love the Chris Hemsworth reference he put in there, like, because like we're we're not black hat. We're not like some dude who can just get out of prison after ten years and just immediately hack the entire planet and then speak for yourself. <laughs> Did you guys know that Leslie is a, almost a second degree black belt <laughs> and an amazing marksman? So, like, she's the I am Chris Hemsworth, and I am the I am not Chris Hemsworth. I'm the scrawny basement nerd. Uh, and, and all of us are involved in this together, but the media is just terrible at presenting that. And we have a responsibility, just like any other group that's pushed down and ha has incorrect information reported about it, we have a responsibility to get out there and correct it. And we have to speak up. And it's hard to speak up, but... You do it long enough, you get loud enough, people start to listen. Uh, so, we proudly introduce, <laughs> I didn't, <laughs> the undefeated InfoSec Tag Team Champions of 2013 to present. That's a, who saw that snub of a high five? <laughs> Leslie and Johnny's awkward and super exciting adventure in trying to teach uh, everybody about InfoSec. Uh, and I'll then also get them to come work for us immediately. How's that for a title? He put the nice stuff, I put the ulterior motive. Yeah. I, I want to hire you. Yeah, because um, again, we are just desperate for people, and us getting out of this room and speaking in places where there might be people who can really help us, who have those outside perspectives, is critical to filling those seats, to getting those warm bodies in those chairs in your sock. Um, and. And again, we're going to, so just come along with us. This is amazing. You guys have to do this. We've had such a blast doing this over the past couple of years, speaking at non-InfoSec cons. Um, our adventures have included, um, trust me, this one's an adventure, career advising and mentoring, which sounds like something you'd hear in like a daytime TV commercial. Um, you get so many perspectives and other ways of looking at things just from talking to people who are trying to get InfoSec and they're like, I can't get a job because here's my situation. And you go, oh my God, I had never even thought of that. God, what would I do? What would I do as a hiring manager uh, if somebody came to me with this situation? And then what could they do to convince me to hire them anyway? That's amazing. And that makes you a great hiring manager. And it really helps you round out your InfoSec team. Um, on the same uh, terms, InfoSec resume advising and editing, which is something both Leslie and I have done. Um, Leslie gets heavy into it at times. We'll talk about this later. Um, all of your resumes are terrible. All of you. Like this entire room, even Cy Dragon, the entire mess of you, just awful. Awful. Side Dragon's resume is like, I made a plane fly sideways, suckers, hire me. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't hire that guy. No, nope. Not, nope. Not on my watch. Um, oh, God. I got to hang. I... Johnny, why is Paul Oakenfold in my slides? It's not <laughs> funny. I get to hang out with Paul Oakenfold, and I will tell you about that later. Um, it's an amazing story that Leslie loves. Um, we speak at anime and gaming and sci-fi conventions. Who, uh, who here loves anime? Who loves gaming, like board gaming? Who loves board games? All right, same number of people. Uh, who loves sci-fi? Some other same, yeah, even more people. Who would go to cons based on those things? Or who does? Dragon Con, Gen Con, that's a lot of freaking hands. We speak there about information security 
And, our, and they love it. And they love it. And the audience grows every time we do. It's, it's great. Like, if you want to feel like a freaking rock star, stop speaking here. Go to Gen Con and tell them you're a hacker. <laughs> Actual truth. Shecky back there has done it with us. It's amazing. It's actually quite terrifying. Every year we get more and more people signed up and we're like, haven't we seen these people for three years in a row? And they want, they have more questions. They want to do more stuff about hacking for their books and their games and to see if their video games and their TV shows are correct. They are full of questions. They want to learn more. Yeah, I, now I have people from those conventions who are writing fiction and not like slash fic, not like uh, some things you may have read about us, um, but, but actual fiction who like go, hey, I want to make sure that the hacking, the hacking things that are, I'm writing in my book are actually legitimate and able to happen in real life. And that's amazing. Now we're helping just book writers make sure that they're conveying proper information to the general public so that what goes on in our realm is more accurately represented. Um, also, we, we start InfoSec meetups. I, uh, I'm a co-coordinator for four of them in Chicago. I've started one of my own, one or more. Um, that's great. Get, getting everyone together uh, so that they don't feel so alone, so that they can share information with each other. Um, Steve's a regular at uh, our information security meetups. Um, how many new people have you seen come in that are just like mind blown by the fact that there's other people who are this into it? Back when it had no modifier, it was just verb sec. Yeah, so, so Steve's pointing out that our verb sec, the famous verb sec in Chicago, started with four people, and now we average about 50. Uh, and that's just, you know, the main one. I think we hit over 60 at verb sec east, and this is just people who are passionate about doing this, who are looking to, like, just connect, uh, just like you, the same reason you people are here, and now I get to tell you to stop doing it. But um, aside from that, Leslie's a huge blogger. Who reads Leslie's blog? Nobody. That's actually you should. That is a significant number. You should. Of it's hands, really cool actually. colors and like it's in order and like I don't spell words wrong. You should totally read my blog. That's that's me self promoting. I'm good at that too. And then finally, a the last thing that we do. The last thing that we do is we deal a lot with the media. So for some reason, they think that we're credible sources to talk to about security issues. It's because you it, have a blog. It's because I have a blog, and it's very professional it and cool credible. colors. So I, I'm a credible info se information security reference for the media. So we both deal with the media a lot, and that's something else we're going to talk about briefly. All of these are going to be like the 10,000 foot view um, because we don't have a lot of time. So we want to give you some ideas. We want to seed that idea in your head for you to go out and do one or more of these things because you can also do this. Um, introvert, extrovert, no matter what kind of per He's like, introverts, introvert. unite! Yeah. Who here is an introvert? Yeah, it's They're all too shy to raise their hands. <laughs> I should have made you stand up or something. Maybe we'll do that later. That'll be That's fine. That's one of the worst questions in the English language. Like, who's an introvert? Who's an extrovert? Who's the less hand? <laughs> okay, so for the people on the, on the stream who can't see, there was like three people raise their hands that they were an introvert and five people raise their hands that they're an extrovert and there's like 30 people in here, so. Yeah, it's, and, and that, that's the whole point of this. You, you guys, can do this. You look at Leslie and I and go, oh, well, that's that's Johnny and Leslie. They're just naturally these charismatic, uh, outgoing people. Um, no, no, sir. No, there's there's nothing that I love more than canceling plans and not going outside. There's nothing I love more than a weekend at home. Um, I would just like hole up with like. I can't say that on camera. I just told up with uh, martial arts equipment and slightly weapon-related accessories for the weekend. But but not in like a prepper way. Not not in a prepper way. <laughs> just because it's it's exciting and I want to be an action hero when I grow up. Yeah. So like again, we we totally understand like going outside and having to do things is scary as hell and weird and you're gonna get freaked out and people are gonna sit here in silence with their arms crossed and stare at you for like an hour you like and this you guy and, and, <laughs> and it's freaky 
Um, and so like you, you, you have to like, you just got to practice. You got to get out there. And once you get out there, you find out like, it's not that bad. Um, I am an introverted agoraphobe. Um, I had an intense fear of being outside of my house for more than about an hour. Um, I would go to like really cool parties where all my friends were and my band was playing. And like, as soon as my band was done, I'd be like, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta see you guys later. And it was terrible. Um, I know that just even just going outside, like having to put on pants sucks. Who here hates pants? Who here hates Hi, pants? They raise their hand. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've got to get on a topic that everybody cares about. Yeah, that's true. And man, nobody likes pants. I don't know what's wrong with you people that didn't raise your hand. Like, you're weird. You go wait in the car. Um, <laughs> Uh, it, and it's just like, and, and, and what really kills a lot of us is like, we will show up to social situations. We'll go to a meetup. We'll, you know, we'll find something on meetup.com and go, Oh, here's some other people doing what I do. I'll go just hang out and see what's going on. And maybe you won't have a good conversation start. Maybe you won't pick up a couple of friends at that one. And then you go, Oh man, this, I was right. This sucks. I'm not going to do that again. I learned my lesson. I'm going to go back home. And it, even like the greatest pickup artists, say that anything greater than a one in five chance of success with approaching a stranger and having it result in some kind of ongoing relationship is insane. You'll never get better than a 20% success rate on that. So don't be shooting yourself uh, because you talked to one person at a meetup once and it went really weird and then you're like, no, I'm just, I'm going to stay in. That's not good. 20% is what the professionals refer to as perfect. One in five. So if you're getting one in six, that's really good for a first timer. And you just got to get out there and just meet people and talk to people. And the first couple of times it's going to suck. But then every now and then you're going to get that one where you're like, oh man, I, got the, I met this really cool guy. And you're going to want to go home and talk to your friend about it. And it's just, and, and you're going to get that rush and you're going to want to do it again. And just, just. Just go, just go watch my talks on YouTube. I talk about this for like four hours. And there's hours. resources. If you're not Johnny Christmas and you're, the, <laughs> there are resources to improve your public speaking skills like Toastmasters. And again, that involves going outside and seeing people, but it's a lot of other people who don't like going outside and seeing people. So they will make you get up and talk at least once a month if you join these organizations. You can take a speech class at a local college. There's a lot of resources there out there to help you if you want to do more of this. Abs Toastmasters is what got me on this path. Absolutely, 100%. Um, my company had a Toastmasters meetup I didn't even know about. So look into that, I guess. Um, so now that you're all like totally, because this is high level, now you're all like perfect. Like, let's go out and talk to people. Um, what I see happening with technical people like us who are talking to uh, su super non-technical people is we like to make a lot of assumptions. We like to assume that we're the smartest people in the room. We like to assume that everyone we're talking to is freaking idiots, which I'll admit is true a lot of the time. However, it's a bad assumption to make if you don't know the people. Okay, so um, I want to play a little game and you guys are all sleepy and you're waiting to get your next drinks, but I'm, I'm going to play a game with you anyway and maybe some of you all play with me. So the game is, I've got some pictures of some lovely people at the bottom of my screen. And if you know who they are, please don't yell it out, because I, uh, I'll be very sad. Um, so I want anybody who thinks that they know more about computers than the nice old lady in the first picture, the first picture, anybody who thinks they know more about computers, they'd have to explain computers to her to raise your hand. You're all like, this is a trap. I don't want, I don't want to do this. This is a trap. OK. So the second guy is a nice older gentleman. Um, looks like he could be your uncle or your granddad. Um, do you think that you know more about Linux computers than him? Raise your hand if you think you'd have to teach that person about Linux. All right. The third person is a beautiful lady in a pretty dress, pretty pink dress. Raise your hand if you think you know more about software engineering than she does. You guys are so chicken. Oh, I got a hand. I got a hand. All right. All right. And the last person on the list. Who, um, who raised their hand? Yeah. All, all right. right. I got a prize for you. Okay. <laughs> Good job. Good job not being a chicken. And the last person on the list, uh, raise your hand if you think you'd have to, um, if you'd have to explain phones to him. He's got a smartphone there. 
he looks very confused. He's, <laughs> he's got a smartphone, phone. you know, like maybe he needs a hand. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, Ask him if they know who they are. All right, so let's, 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 uh, you can yell it now. I won't be sad now. Who knows who the first person in the first picture, the nice old lady is? Oh. That is, that is definitely not Ruth Ginsburg. I'm sorry. <laughs> you are correct, sir. Whoever said Grace, Grace Hopper? Hopper. Who said Grace Hopper? Well done, sir. That is Admiral Grace Hopper. What did Grace Hopper do? Point the word buck. Tell me what Grace Hopper did. Uh, she also invented COBOL. She is essentially the mother of modern computing through developing military computing systems. Um, oh, next, is that up? Next, <laughs> who, who knows who the next person is? The uh, nice older gentleman in the blue shirt. You are fantastic, man. <laughs> Robert Morris. And you, you owe him for lots of, lots of cryptographic components in Linux, like indirectly and directly, and that includes like Etsy password. Um, who is the next, who is a nice young lady? The Victoria's Secret model. Who is the beautiful model in the next picture? Literally a Victoria's yes, Secret Yes, she model. is literally a Victoria, and I can't believe nobody in the room at least knows really? her for that. You, guys you don't, don't want to admit it. You guys don't know hot computer chicks. That, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Tay. That is it's not, not Swift Tay. on security. <laughs> that is Lindsay Scott, software engineer, who currently moonlights as a Victoria's Secret runway model. And who knows who this? And if you guys don't know who this last person is, somebody shout it out, please. Thank you, you guys, John. John. Right, right. Oh. <sighs> we're they won't, they won't we're terrible. Wow, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Counterculture people here, right. wow. Captain Crunch. Captain Crunch. Who knows what Captain Crunch did? <laughs> oh, now you all know who he is. Yeah. yeah. It's because I'm not asking. I'm scary. Yeah. Yeah, Captain Crunch, um, among many things, part of the 1970s hacking scene um, contributor to... The 2600 magazine zine, when it was a zine that was stapled together and passed around. Um, biggest claim to fame is he was the one who discovered that the Cap'n Crunch whistle in the cereal boxes could be used to simulate coin deposits inside of pay phones. Um, it ran at 2600 hertz, which coincidentally, not coincidentally, incidentally, is where 2600 magazine gets its name and the 2600 organization, etc. So yeah. Uh, looks like a crazy old man, right? Not to say that he's not a crazy old man. However, is, you don't know more about about hacking than him, probably. Yeah. Um, so we make assumptions about all kinds of groups of people, and that includes people who are younger than us, who we might assume didn't have the cool upbringing with a 286 that we had or Commodore, or whatever we had. And we also make the same assumption about the people who did have all those things, the people who are older than us, because we think we did that they don't know anything about computers. And in some cases, this might be true. But in lots of cases, they actually do know a lot about computers and they want to learn more. And by making those assumptions, we're actually being tremendously condescending to them when we're trying to explain things, when we're trying to get them involved in security. So we always want to start from the beginning and try to verify what fundamental knowledge the person has before launching into a description of something. Oh, and at the same time, understand what fundamental knowledge that person has before condescending and talking down to them and assuming they don't know what you're talking about. Because if they do know what you're talking about and they do know what you do, they're, they may not call you out on it. They may let you keep talking and let you dig your own grave. Don't assume these people don't know computers. Talk to everybody as if they're, they're your equal. Feel them out. Ask them if they know about or understand things. That's not insulting as long as you don't doing it, do, you don't do it in an insulting manner. Uh, but definitely don't make assumptions just based on the physical appearances of who you're talking to. I know we hear, we've been hearing that every day since we were four. That's because it's a natural human thing that we do. And because of that, it's something you need to constantly keep an eye on. And yeah, and it goes back to the picture of the hacker. You need to make sure that you're not doing it. And because it's instinctive, you need to have it in your conscious mind. 
Uh, moving on to career advising and mentoring. Um, man, do people need our help. Who here's a hiring manager? Or at least has some say in who gets hired, who gets, who's part of your team that gets to review resumes. A lot of you, right? Um, uh, who would say that 95% of the resumes you've seen are the most horrible things you've ever seen in the entirety of your lives, including like soft four? Um, yeah, they suck. And we all know that. And are we doing anything to help that? No, we just don't even call those people, which is like the worst thing. Um, and so like, First and foremost, what we need to do as hiring managers is we need to drop the elitism. We need to stop hire, stop not hiring people simply because they don't have a background in information security because they haven't been doing it for five years. Like we have these tons of open seats. We need warm bodies. We need a person to sit here and stare at the sim to just you know, watch the logs roll in and at least do something about it. And if you're going to be like, well, you, I mean, this, this dude doesn't even, he doesn't have five years experience. I'm not even going to call this guy. Um, that's, that's bullshit. You need to talk to those people because there's a reason they submitted for that job. And it could simply be passion. Um, like Cat Sweet was saying, a lot of us got into this job by accident, by coincidence. Um, I'm a musician who went to school for pharmacology, and now I'm up here talking to you about how to run your information security business. Um, call those people. If you think there's something going on with them, if something piqued your interest, at least give them the benefit of a phone call. Um, not everybody has had the same advantages of you. Not all of us have been able to go to college. I was expelled from college. I do not have a degree. Uh, and yet, I was able to get a job through a friend, luckily enough, and now I have an incredibly successful career because somebody gave me a shot. Don't just write them off because they don't have a degree. Um, I, colleges haven't even offered information security degrees further back than five years ago. Uh, and then, I mean, who here works in IT? Four of you? Everybody here probably works in IT. Um, how many of you like learned everything you know about IT from college? None of Please you. Don't raise your hands. None of you. So stop being like, well, he doesn't meet the college requirements, so we can't even call him. You're part of the problem. Call him. And that doesn't just include like college. It's also financial. You know, not everybody has the money to go build a home lab. I mean, we at the amount of money that actually costs because of virtualization, but not everybody can go out and buy a computer. They are at a significant disadvantage when they have to use the school's resources instead of having their own, and we should be trying to help them with that, find them places to work, find them places to learn. We can't live in a box of everybody being privileged and advantaged in learning about security. I had, uh, who had the first computer in the house by age eight? whether you built it or not. All right, how about age 16? Way more people. Age 21? I didn't have a computer until I was 22. Like my own computer that was mine to use. And I don't mean like family computer. I mean there wasn't a computer in my house till I left home and put a computer together with <laughs> garbage picked parts that I got me fired from my job. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and so it's, it, don't judge those people based on what their advantages were. That's garbage, and that's bullshit, and that's, you can call it white privilege or whatever. It's something we do do instinctively, and I'll acknowledge that. Just like everybody's a little bit racist with the song, you need to be aware of that, and you need to constantly check yourself. Um, seek mentees out, man, yeah. Uh, and, and, so, and, as a person who may be having trouble getting into the field, don't be afraid to hit somebody up for help. Don't be afraid to hit up Leslie or I for help. That's all we do. That's, I'd say that's the only beneficial thing I've done for this industry is help other people get a job. Please. And if you're being asked for help, try to do it. Don't ignore those people. They want help for a reason. Yeah, take the five, 10, 20, 30 minutes out of your day Look at the resume. Give them some tips. It has never taken me more than 10 minutes to review a resume and provide legitimate, helpful feedback on that. You can do that. Take 10 more minutes out of your division game and just do that for somebody. 
I guess division's not cool yet. Division is very cool. <laughs> very, very cool. Yeah. All right. So that leads us right into resumes. And everybody has a billion questions, and we can talk about that in the QA about what we've seen wrong in resumes. And that's a talk in and of itself. Yeah. Um, but very, very briefly, why do we care about resumes when we're talking about breaking out of the echo chamber? Because when people want to get into InfoSec and do it as a career, often the only barrier preventing them from getting a, a, a in-person interview in an office and getting their first steps in the career done are their resumes, unfortunately. And we've seen, as he mentioned, some really, really, really bad resumes out there. And um, we have an obligation as the hiring managers to try to help those people if they ask for help, um, and even in some cases if they don't directly ask for help. So some of the biggest problems, just because you're all going to ask, are the first one is absolute, obsolete resume formats. And that means like they got a format template in their high school resume writing class from 1995, and they're following the procedures in that. Who still sees the word, the objective field on the top of resumes? I think we've, we've worn out everything. Their, their hands are tired. <laughs> but anyway, that's it, if they even use a format at all, if they even use a proper resume format at all. Like I've seen everything bunched together in a list of bullet points. I've seen pink resumes with pictures on them. Pink. Like I, I don't even know what's going on. That is not. You are doing it wrong. Meme-based resume. I have not seen a meme-based resume, but I would probably hire that person. Never mind. Um, I won't bring it up. OK, you can bring it up afterwards. He has a story. Yeah, I won't say it on video. OK. It's someone we know. OK, so um, they're also not seeking out resume editing. So I recommend to everybody, I do a lot of free resume editing and low-cost resume editing for people, but I recommend everybody get a professional resume edit done. And there's lots of very well-skilled people who are willing to do that for a nominal fee. And what you're paying for there is somebody who has expertise, professional expertise in getting past HR filtering systems or government filtering systems or take your pick for the job that you're applying. That is what they do for a living and they know how to format your resume properly for it. So that's a great resource. And finally, um, we're not seeing good keywords and quantification in resumes, which means we see resumes come through with absolutely no indication of how big the companies they worked for were, how many incidents they handled, and uh, how many years of skill they had with particular tasks. I've got, I've got one sentence that's going to fix that for all of you. So when... You know, when you guys look at a job posting on a company's website and it says, here's all the, 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 what the job involves and what qualifications you have to have for this job. And you go, cool, I got all those. I'm going to apply. This is good. That job posting is your resume template. Your resume should contain every single word that was in that job posting. Don't and you lie. should, and you, yeah, don't lie. Don't lie. Don't lie. Leave out the parts that just don't apply, but that's your template. That's how you're going to get through the HR filters. And you should be submitting a custom resume to every single job that you apply for. So when you look at that template and it goes and has all these listings and you make sure that your resume has all those words in it, HR, who doesn't know crap about IT or security, is going to look at your resume and go, oh my God, he's the chosen one. <laughs> It's the prophecy was true, and then they'll pass it on over to the hiring manager, and then you're in. It's that easy. They're telling you, they're telling you what your resume should look like. Okay, so a little bit more about the non InfoSec cons that we speak at. Um, first of all, InfoSec affects pretty much everybody, even if you live out in the desert, cut off from the world, your medical records are something are somewhere, your data can still get breached somewhere. It's a fact of life now that information security affects us as human beings in the modern world. Um, and secondly, InfoSec is really cool. We're computer hackers. You guys, that is so cool. Everybody thinks that is super cool. Um, and they want to learn more about it because it's a fun, sexy, awesome thing that is on primetime TV right now. Can you think of a better pickup line than I rob banks as a pen tester? <laughs> a star asterisk star as a pen caveat. Line. Like, it's sexy. It's what everyone wants. Like, it's on the news all the time. Oh, hackers did this. Hackers broke into that. You're a hacker. 
Get out there and use that influence to talk to people who already think it's sexy and straighten them out, get them more interested in what security is and what personal privacy is and civil liberties. Like you already have influence that you're not aware of because you're hanging out in this echo chamber and kind of burying yourself under everything else. Hi, I'm Leslie. I'm a hacker. I'm like Abby from NCIS, but not. <laughs> anyway, so all these people who we're talking to, they're usually a geek about something. Almost everybody in the world is a geek about something, whether it's cars or computers or trading. I don't know. What are people geeks about? Johnny, help me out. Music. You like music. Slash fic. Give me some things. What are you geeks about other than computers? Beer. All cars, right. Cars. 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 Yeah. Ones. Awesome. Yeah. So everybody's a geek about something, and they uh, they want to learn more about how computer hacking affects their geekdom. And it usually does. Car hacking. Hey. Shodan and all the brewery hacking. That's and, actually horrible. I don't want to think about that anymore. And, and they're just geeks. Like, they're just geeks, and they just like to learn things because they're geeks, because we're geeks, and the, this, the whole reason we're here is we just like to learn things. So teach them something new, because, like, we know that it's really hard to get information security help even when googling imagine how the muggles feel help them out show up to the muggle cons talk to them about like whatever like piddling bs you do at work that like you figure isn't even worth talking about here take it somewhere where it is worth worth talking about people are gonna dig it and you're gonna help them out it's great they're already excited like don't ruin it. Go there and be like, yeah, it's exciting. And like throw some information at them. Dump some knowledge on them FFers. They're going to think about hackers from then on and they're going to think about you and how cool this person was who answered their questions and hung out with them. And they're going to start Googling the crap that you talked about. And that's the best part. Um, as far as um, if you can't get out to various geek cons, flight, travel, it's difficult, I know. Um, cost is an issue. I've been broke for a very long time. I was homeless for a stint. I understand, like, it, it's not that easy. Um, you may live in a far off area in the middle of the desert, but I guarantee you, even if you're in the middle of the desert, there's probably at least one other dude, uh, or chick, or whatever, who also works in InfoSec, or wants to work in InfoSec, or just likes InfoSec, and wants to hang out and talk about it, and maybe have a beer. Um, and that's great. And you can even just run your own con at home, which is really just an infosec meetup. And you could start your own with hookers and blackjack. And it, it's you not. You can all say it if you want. Yes. Start your own meetup with hookers <laughs> and blackjack. They, oh Good my job. God. AC Adrian is helpful. <laughs> um, it, it, it's, it's, it's not that hard. Like, it, if you live in any kind of IT hotspot, which is like everywhere now, you're going to have a good go at it. If you don't, it's going to be a little more rough. You're probably going to only have maybe four or five people. But you know what? The four or five people who show up are really passionate about it. And they're going to love it and they're going to keep showing up because they're people like you. The people who go out of their way to, to blow a Friday, Saturday, uh, on hanging out having a drink, talking InfoSec with all these other people here. Wouldn't you like to do that at the bar that's like four blocks from your house? Set it up. It's that easy. That is so much closer to your Netflix and your comfort zone. Man, you can just like get get your pajamas and go out there. You do have to put on pants. I'm sorry, Johnny. <laughs> Who? <laughs> Who? You do have to put on pants, Johnny. You do have to put on pants. And what's weird about that is like nobody likes to wear pants, and yet we as a society have all agreed that we have to wear pants when we go outside. What are you doing? What are you doing? That's a whole other talk, and we're going to put a stop to this. In the meantime, it, um, who likes to have a beer and complain about work? The whole room. That's all a meetup is. Tell a bunch of other people, hey, I'm going to have a beer and complain about work. Right? Come, head, come to the bar. Meet up. And all of a sudden, all the other people around who are like, hey, I want to learn more about computer hacking are like, whoa, dude, look at, the, look at these people. They're having a good time. I can talk to them. It's not a, a, a terrifying experience like going to a conference might be. Yeah, you all just... I have to do is drink a beer and leave my house. I can probably handle it. That's, that's all right. I'm doing half of those things already. I just have to leave the house. Like, I can already drink beer. Good. Okay. Cool. Safe zone. Go outside. I don't know, but I'm going to try it. Uh, it's, and 
what's really great about that is you start drawing on these people who don't know about InfoSec but want to or have read a lot of things but don't have a lot of resources, they'll start showing up. And that's the coolest thing. When someone who doesn't have an InfoSec job shows up to your meetup, it's like, that's, that's my favorite. That's, that's Christmas to me. I'm like, you, yes, yes. It's, it's fantastic. That's when you really feel like you're actually doing something to help somebody. Um, I didn't mean to be so creepy. I'm sorry, Leslie. Nice hand motion. Okay, yeah. <laughs> he was like, yes. I, I will draw you and the, I will take your soul. Let the power flow through you. We have cookies. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, um, I'm next slide. Go next slide. I'll let Leslie talk. Oh, I, I, oh, oh, see, oh, dear. Oh, but I have things to say about it, but go ahead. Okay. <laughs> he, he's like, I'll interrupt you, but no, My I won't. Drink is empty. Oh, dear, his drink is empty. That's terrible. Okay, so you all have something to talk about, and you might think it is the most boring thing in the world and nobody wants to hear about it. You might also think, I saw six talks on this already, nobody wants to hear about it again. That is not true. You all have something interesting to share. You have your own perspective on things. You have interesting work that you're working on. It doesn't matter how many years you've been professionally doing InfoSec. Get out there and share it. Like we've said, there are venues that have nothing to do with InfoSec people who would love to hear about this is how you hack a computer. This is how you prevent somebody from hacking into a computer. Steps one through three basics. And they want to hear about that stuff. And they want to hear those cool hacking stories that you've, we've all heard 50 billion times, not naming anybody in this room, that are really cool. They want to hear them. Yeah, you don't know who's reading that blog. Chances are it's a lot of people who aren't in this room. I used to have a blog and I got really dejected about it and stopped doing it because I was like, nobody's reading this. That doesn't matter. But it doesn't matter how many. I, I had three, pe three people read my blog. I don't care. Do you know, count? those three people have written me back and been like, wow, that was really helpful in getting a job in InfoSec because that's what I write about a lot is like just getting into InfoSec, learning more about it. And people are really appreciative of that. Yeah, and really, again... All it takes is that one person. That one person is going to go, wow, that really helped. Even if it's four years later, you get some comment on your blog like, hey, I tried this and it worked out. You're going to go, you, you, you get a warm fuzzy inside. And even though like it was just one person, it doesn't feel like one person. It feels like you helped the entirety of the internet get a job. And it's amazing. So just stick it out because every now and then you're going to get those. And it's fantastic. And if you don't like to write, you can always podcast. That's a great resource out there for now. You can just talk into a microphone in your safe zone with your Netflix. Go, don't play your Netflix on the background of the podcast, but <laughs> that's, um, that's like a weird, or your like, or your division. But do do talk if you don't like to write. Is that like Wizard of Oz, and then you play Dark Side of the Moon? Like what Netflix movie goes with your Infosec podcast? Hmm. This is a good tweet. We'll like, ask this on Twitter. Uh, yeah, I'll ask that later. <laughs> you guys vote, okay? Not for the Q and A. Um, what I like to do is I, I don't blog and I don't podcast personally, but I contribute a lot to other people's. Um, I regularly send Leslie 27-page contributions to her blog, which she tri tri trims down to the necessary uh, 17 words, and it totally works out. Um, and I do a lot of podcasts where I'll just come in as like the guest for that podcast and talk about stuff. And I do a lot of non-infosec podcasts. I do comic books. I do anime. I do computers. And so just put yourself out there. Hit those podcasts up. Go, hey, I'm an InfoSec guy. I do this and that and the other thing. Uh, I really like to do podcasts. Do you, you know, do you guys need somebody? Hit me up. Let me know. It's that easy. Just do with that. Just do that. Um, moving on. Dealing with the media is a hot button for me. Uh, how many people have to deal with the media here as a regular part of their job? One, it's a really low number, and I know, because most of us, you go, I don't know, you just, you talk, we got people for that. You go upstairs. Roberts is back there with his beer. Like. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris Roberts has only de dealt with, like, one media outlet, and he's already upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> you came back in at the right time. Um, it's, uh, dealing with the media is really hard, and there's entire talks have been given on this. This would be a good one for like Dan Tentler, just a whole dealing with the media yeah. talk. But the basics of it are like, if you are contacted by the media, say you dropped some lead hack, say you were one of the like prime contributors to the 3D printed TSA keys and the media is all over you. Um, you're allowed to decline that. You're allowed to tell them no or not respond. Um, if you do want to respond, if you do want to make sure the proper message is getting out there, 
Treat the media like a person who's applying for a job. Like you're, like they want you to hire them to write the article on the thing that you did or are talking about or are in the middle of doing. They like to pressure you. The media are salespeople. They like to make you feel awful for this and that. They like to guilt you into going along with what they need because it makes them look good. No, treat them like you're hiring them. Vet what, who they are and what they do. Look at past articles that they have written on the general topics of what you're talking about. And if you don't like it, turn them down. It's totally fine. Um, tell them up front, listen, I will work with you, but I need to see the article before it's published, and I reserve the right to tell you you can't publish it if I don't like what it looks like. You can do that. That's a thing you can say, and they have to agree to, or you don't have to give the interview. It's that simple, and that's how you avoid them you know, twisting what you said into FUD. Um, Ask, this is a favorite one of mine, if you agree to an interview, tell them to shoot you the questions they're going to ask you beforehand. This really applies to like audio interviews and podcasts and things like that. Say, hey, yeah, cool, shoot me the questions and I'll take a look at them. And that way, not only can you really make sure you've got the right answers to things, you can bounce your answers off of friends and go, does this look right? Do you think someone's going to misinterpret this? What do you think? Uh, and that's great. Um, your employer uh, or community may have... PR specialists or, or legal people available for you. Um, and one of my favorite things is calling out poor journalism. That's me. Not great PR for yourself. Uh, but don't be afraid to be like, hey, this is FUD. Here is why. Don't just shitpost and go, ah, oh, that's stupid. You're wrong. Cite sources and cite reasons. Um, yeah, that's a good, yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, we wanted to briefly recognize some organizations that are already out there doing great uh, outreach outside of the echo chamber. The first one is Hackers for Charity. Hackers for Charity, I'm wearing your shirt. For um, They do uh, charity work around the world, and there are a bunch of hackers who have decided to go try to save the planet. And they're doing a lot of great work in Uganda right now. Second one is I Am the Cavalry, whose sole purpose is interfacing with people outside of inter InfoSec, and they have great resources on all the things that we've just talked about. The, cer the third one is the EFF, of course. They are one of the public-facing organizations for interfacing with policy and governance and law. So that's about all we've got for you tonight. Uh, here's our contact information. They told us they told us we had to put this like QR code thing in our talk. So it's, if you need it, it's up there. You guys can come get it. Uh, questions, answers. You can provide either. That's totally I'm not fun. as much of a jerk as he is. Oh. <laughs> Witness the dichotomy of our relationship. <laughs> All right. Thanks a lot, guys.